Hi everyone, how are you? I hope you've been having a good reading year. Uh, so I know I've been making a lot of videos recently talking about these best uh, books of the year lists, but finally, this is my own personal favorite books of the year. So I'm gonna talk about my top 10, and I always really enjoy and look forward to making this video because I love being able to share my favorite books that I've read recently. And one of the most satisfying things is when somebody picks up a book based on my recommendation and loves it as well. Uh, I love hearing about that. So let me know if you're interested in reading any of these books uh, after I discuss them, or if you've read them already, uh, let me know your thoughts below. You know, even if you disagree with me, I mean, maybe especially if you disagree agree with me, um, but also let me know some of your favorite books of the year as well. Now I seem to be getting a bit of a reputation as a book prize guy. Uh, I mean maybe I've had this reputation for a long time, uh, but I did read most of the books listed for the Booker Prize this year, and one of the big book news stories of the year uh, was that the Booker was awarded to two novels instead of one. And when the announcement was made, I was sure it was going to be these two novels uh, which were announced because these are absolutely two of my favorite books of the year. Uh, so Duck's Newburyport may be more famous now for its page count than the, the contents of this great novel, uh, but I did find it a completely immersive reading experience. I mean, the, the subject matter is sort of catered towards me because there's a lot in it about baking and uh, old movies, which are two passionate interests of mine. Uh, but it's also a brilliant uh, take on our, our current times, our current state of mind, our current preoccupations and anxieties and fears, our current tendency uh, for making uh, assumptions and uh, taking rumor as fact. And all of this is filtered through the unrelenting perspective of one Ohio housewife. I found it hypnotic and hilarious and unlike anything I've ever read before, while it also reminded me of some literary greats like Mrs. Dalloway and Ulysses, and I, I don't know how Lucy Elman did that. But like I said in a recent video I made about some of my favorite books of the decade, I think this is going to be a future classic. But one of the novels that did win the Booker Prize, and deservedly so, is Girl, Woman, Other by Bernardine Evaristo. So one of the difficulties of having political discussions around minority groups and minority communities in Britain is that it groups large groups of very different individuals into one category. And this is something that political pundits do a lot. So it's really meaningful and effective how Evaristo in this novel portrays the lives of many different kinds of black women to show many different points of view and ways of living. Uh, but this novel isn't just about making this larger statement. Uh, what I think is, is really important is that it's great immersive storytelling that had me gripped and I kept flipping through the novel to understand all the connections between these different women and, and how their their lives touch upon each other in different ways. It's a very creative way of telling the story of a community who support each other and sometimes tear each other down. My Life as a Rat by Joyce Carol Oates. And you knew there was going to be a JCO novel in this list. Uh, but what I think is one of the most terrifyingly tragic dilemmas that any of us can face is being rejected by our own families. Uh, so the adolescent girl at the center of this story, she witnesses her brothers committing a racist attack and she testifies that this has happened. And this is seen as a great betrayal by her family who throw her out of the only life she's ever known. One of Oates' greatest themes throughout all of her writing is this instinct for survival that her characters exhibit. So even though this, this girl is rejected by her family, um, she still persists and continues while holding on to this really heart-rending hope uh, that her family will one day welcome her back. But it's really a novel about the tough choices that we all face when negotiating whether to remain loyal to those we depend upon or doing what we know is right. And the way Oates depicts the psychological complexities of this is so impactful 
successful. The Nickel Boys by Colson Whitehead. Uh, this novel looks at a different side of racial injustice where a young man is falsely accused of a crime and put in a juvenile reformatory in Florida. And even though it's called a reformatory, uh, there he experiences the horrendous ways that young men are abused and in some instances even killed, uh, and how the larger community either ignores this fact or is actively complicit in their exploitation. It's so moving how Whitehead composes this story and presents the way that whole histories and communities of people can be made to disappear. And I'm one of uh, the many fans of this novel that feels it's an injustice uh, that this book hasn't won any awards yet. You Will Be Safe Here by Damien Bar. So speaking of hidden histories, I had no idea before reading this novel uh, that during the Second Boer Wars in the early 1900s, the British military were responsible for setting up and running concentration camps in South Africa. So these camps were purportedly for their inhabitants' safety, but they were really a slow form of torture, and they were a political tactic on the British government's part um, to steer the war. So the central story concerns a mother who goes to one such camp. Uh, but really it's a dual narrative because the second half of the book is about a teenage boy who's taken to a different kind of camp, uh, which is meant to make a real man out of him through torturous practices. So it's about how different institutions can be made to, to seem like they're for people's protection and betterment, but really physically and psychologically destroy them. So I know this all sounds very weighty and like difficult subject matter, uh, but these are things that I found I only thought about after finishing the novel. I mean, what really drew me into the novel was the, the warmth and emotion of the characters it portrays. I found them very endearing and that's what made this a really enjoyable read as well as a moving one. Constellations by Sinead Gleason. This is a book of autobiographical essays which follow the trajectory of Gleason's life uh, through illness and marriage and motherhood and her work as a journalist. And while they touch upon some very personal subject matter, it gives a perspective on the social and political transformation in Ireland over the course of a generation. First off, I love this book because the writing is so beautiful and smart while not being self-important. And she does this by referencing a lot of artists and writers, but only in instances where they have deep personal meaning uh, for her and the, the subject matters of her life. And it's amazing how it's an evocation of an entire culture as well as a hard-fought life. The Years by Annie Ernaux, and in this she does something somewhat similar to what Gleason does in her book, uh, but it's set in France instead of Ireland. And this is my first time reading Ernaux's writing, and I was blown away by how she can write such specific details uh, that nevertheless have much larger cultural significance and evoke a whole time period. And she does this by using a collective we voice uh, while describing certain political events and cultural occurrences over a generation in French life. But you're also aware of the individual protagonist who all of this is filtered through and uh, can sort of witness um, at a remove events from her life, uh, like how she has children and goes through a divorce. So reading this was a complete revelation for me. And I think it's so unique and extraordinary. This Brutal House by Niven Govindan so this is another very unique way of telling a story and presenting a whole culture. And in this instance, it's a drag culture in New York City. And he does this by presenting the voices of many different queens, um, sometimes as a collective voice of the mothers of this house. Uh, but also he represents the police force that
that they sometimes clash against, um, as well as the individual voice of a man named Teddy, who's the child of one of these houses. It's a beautiful evocation of how drag is both funny and playful, as well as being a political act, and a way of creating non-traditional families. And he really meaningfully shows how there can be a lot of infighting and injustice within these houses, as well as um, how they create these very strong bonds. Paul takes the form of a mortal girl by Andrea Lawler. So this novel takes the concept of Orlando by Virginia Woolf, uh, which is a character who changes back and forth between a man and a woman, and puts it in the form of Paul, who's a 23-year-old college student in 1993. Uh, but Paul really differs from the character of Orlando in some crucial ways, and even self-consciously states at one point that I am not Orlando. And even though this character uh, switches back and forth between male and female, there's a central core to uh, his character uh, which uh, remains consistent and I found very endearing and fun while also showing how he's a very flawed individual that can make assumptions about other people based on their appearance. Uh, just the way that they make assumptions about him uh, based on the way that he fashions his own appearance. So it's really inventive and uh, brilliant, I think, what this novel says about our ideas about gender. And it is also such a sexy, sexy novel. <laughs> Underland by Robert McFarlane. Uh, this is a very different kind of book. Uh, this is McFarlane's uh, personal account of his journeys through different subterranean landscapes uh, around the world, um, from caves to mining operations to scientific research centers uh, to the bottoms of glaciers, and how these different underground landscapes really shape our environment, even though we're largely entirely unaware of them. Uh, but they're also repositories for our geological and human history. I found it a really liberating way of breaking out of my own circumscribed view of the world, you know, which mainly consists of walking between my home and work. Uh, but I also found the writing so poetically beautiful, and he makes many poignant reference points, uh, as well as making larger statements about the environment and where we are going as a species. Those are my favorite books of the year, even though I've read many other great books this year. Uh, so let me know if you have any thoughts or feelings or opinions or any of your favorite books uh, in the comments below. I'd really like to hear about them. Uh, so thank you for watching. A very happy new year to you, and hopefully I will speak to you again soon. Bye, everyone.